This is a gecko you can ride up mountains. And this is a rabbit, more dangerous than the warden. And these 49 forest mobs need to be added into Minecraft, especially the extremely intelligent Umvathana. These bird-like predators circle their prey before jumping in to slash with their claws in coordinated attacks. Upon death, these Umvathana may drop their masks, which can be worn to aid you against Umvathai the Sunbird. This boss perches majestically on his throne as he draws immense power from the sun to unleash devastating solar attacks, along with summoning more Umbathana followers to aid him in battle. Yet, for those who manage to best him, the Soul Visage Mask is their prize, enabling you to summon Umbathana followers of your own. But they're not as cute as these tiny followers, the hamsters. They'll either nap or be incredibly active if you craft them a hamster wheel using some slabs and copper. And those wheels can even be hooked up to redstone to generate power as they run. Aw, keep it up, little buddy. Just don't let any of these hungry Bilzy Bufo near anything. These giant carnivorous frogs have a terrible appetite and will eat any mob they can fit in their mouths. And after a meal, they'll drop saliva that can be used to finally craft name tags. But still, looking around nearby, you might find yourself some Cody chops to throw on a stick. Then you can saddle one of these frogs up and bounce around at incredible heights. However, looking up to the heights of the clifftop forest, keep an eye out for the majestic phoenix. This avian is as deadly as it is beautiful and will rain down explosive fire blasts on players. But for those brave enough to face its fiery fury, you'll get a chance at the rare Aklas music disc and the coveted phoenix feather that when held on death will allow you to keep all your items and experience. Ooh. Huh? Oh, <laughs> that's just a hunting pack of gray wolves. They only really prey on deer and elk, though it's not the wolves you have to be worried about. Uh, hey, buddy. <laughs> that's, that's close enough. Uh a skinwalker! Hiding in packs of wolves, these terrifying creatures are swift and deadly. And with their crazy amount of health, you really don't want to be caught unprepared. Oh, a slab turtle. Perfect. Ha <laughs> ha! Thanks, buddy. Ow! Oh, while they don't love it, these turtles were made for knocking into other mobs and deal damage whenever making contact. Though you'll want to be careful as they can unexpectedly bounce back. Ow! Oh, then they just get mad at you for some reason. Hey! Hey! Thankfully, we have the marshes to buff us up because once tamed with a fermented spider eye, they can be fed any potion and will change their color once it's absorbed. From there, a player can right click them with their weapon or shield to coat that gear with the same potion effect, allowing players to create swords that'll poison on attack or shields that'll give regeneration when hit, which can really help when navigating the new and extremely hostile Ender Forests. Although oddly enough, a passive creature called the Mongo survives here, likely due to its ability to vanish into thin air when provoked, leaving behind a trail of pests to deter its pursuers. And if it's touched by a player, it'll send them sky high, which can be great for traversing the tall mountains. Ah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm up here now. Should one die though, it'll leave behind Aerogel, which when crafted into a block, will allow players to harness its airborne powers. Wow! Ah, oh, not the Chakote. This absolute pest loves to raid and steal any crops it can find, whether from a player or a village. No, not my potatoes. That's why you gotta build yourself a scarecrow. Crafted from a hat and some blocks, then imbued with a purple allay, these creatures only purpose is to protect farms from the great Chakote terror. And they do a pretty darn good job. Now, if only they could keep the rot skull away. This undead menace creeps in the shadows of dead forest caves and hates torches. He's quick to snuff out your lights whenever you turn your back, making it much easier for other mobs to spawn. And if you get too close, it'll dart away. Yet strangely, it's drawn to ender eyes. Though even stranger is its ability to turn any object you give it into charcoal, even an entire stack. 
it's better to befriend the mystical flower foxes instead. Unlike any other mob in the game, these little guys have to be grown from seeds, rarely found in flower forest biomes. Just use some bone meal and out pops a fox. Aw, it's just a baby. Which means it's time to stuff its face with stew. Crafted from a variety of flowers and a bowl, with enough stew, they'll be all grown up in no time. And once tamed, these botanical buddies can help you take on evil like the creeplings. Spawning only at night, creeplings bounce and bound right at you. They're difficult to combat in large numbers, unless you've got a candle. Feed them one of those, and they'll happily switch sides to fight for you, even against other creeplings or the Halloween. A mutated version of the creepling that can't be tamed and uses its head to slam down on players. It's a tough opponent, but taking it down can reward you with some creeping vines for crafting pumpkin armor, weapons, and tools. And while this gear matches iron and durability, the tools work even faster. And if you wear the full armor set, you'll be rewarded with a full minute of strength whenever you munch on some pumpkin pie. Even in the dangerous new Tar Forests. For here resides the ooze. This creature can seriously slow you down with its sticky projectiles and make jumping a no-go, which in these tar-filled forests is already hard enough. And while it doesn't like to move much, it'll do everything else in its power to annoy the heck out of you, even while you're being surrounded by the royal zombie and his army. Oh, give me a break. I like to think this undead monarch guards a ruined castle with hidden treasures while it arms its undead crew with swords and helmets, boosting their speed and power. Though, if you overcome his royal highness, you could snag his staff for yourself, granting temporary resistance and strength buffs to make you as strong as the Megatherium. This giant platypus bear is insanely useful, but hard to tame as you have to first find a baby and form a bond with it by carrying it around in a pouch. Once it eventually trusts you though, feed it some ginkgo fruit to help it grow big and strong. Then, saddle it up. While these behemoths are slower than other mobs to ride, they can claw their way through dirt like champs, making them perfect for mining and base building. Huh? Uh, what's going on over here? A horrible beast has come for us all! It's the end of times! Uh, I don't see any, uh, uh, huh, oh boy. Mice are insatiable and will search far and wide for any food they can get their hands on, whether it's crops, cake, or cheese. The only way to stop them is either a mouse trap, which can break, or cats! Aha! There we go! Oh, thank you, kind player! No problem! No, can you take care of our bee problem? Bee problem? Oh, that's a, a big bee. This is the Bumble Beast. And while its appearance is nothing short of terrifying, that actually betrays its gentle heart, as it won't attack unless provoked, and can actually be fed honey blocks to receive a new bee fuzz block. Plus, thanks to the beehives on its back, if you wait a bit, you'll have the chance to bottle up your own honey directly from them, which you can then take with you into the brand new Jewel Forest Biomes. Here, you can find these opal shell creatures carrying new ore on their backs, and clipping them with shears will either net you opals to craft into a dazzling new block set, or the rare precious opal that can both be turned into even more dazzling blocks and crafted into the Potion Diffuser, a device that can consume a potion to then continuously spread its effect within a four block radius, which can give you an edge when fighting the Majungasaurus, a chameleon-like dinosaur mob that is incredibly territorial. It charges at players, whoa, and will attack its own kind, even babies if they get too close. Thankfully, a shield not only stuns this beast when it charges into it, but the stun can also cause it to drop scoots that can be crafted in into a new helmet, giving you this more intimidating look and an increase in strength. But then there's the crafty raccoons. 
grass. While they can be tamed with some melons, for whatever reason, these guys love to lunge and steal pollen right off of any bee they can find, often dropping clumps of their fur in the process, which can be used to craft a stylish raccoon hat or can be turned into fur blocks to build your very own fur golem. And fur golems play a crucial role for many of these new forest mobs by taking care of their eggs. These gentle bearded golems will just sit on the eggs, providing warmth and protection until they hatch, which is great because if left unattended, these eggs would otherwise rot. Not that the giant grasshoppers mind though. Hatch from these very eggs, they love the taste of ones that have rotted or broken and can be tamed using them. Then once tamed, they'll take your jumping game to new levels, allowing you to soar across the lands even higher than those silly little frogs or these puka rabbits. Though you really don't want to mess with those guys. They spawn in new fairy ring structures and are fiercely hostile, not only attacking players, but other mobs like wolves and even iron golems. Oh, and if they see a rabbit, they'll bite it, turning it into a puka too. And you can quickly become overwhelmed when they start inflicting negative effects like blindness or weakness on their targets while giving themselves boosts like regeneration speed, or jump boost. Ah! If you're spotted, the best thing to do is to calm them with golden carrots. Uh, then they'll follow you around sharing their positive effects, which helps a lot when fighting Cacus. This man-eating Venus flytrap with legs can often be found around forest lakes as well, and will chase players down, chomping down with a bite that afflicts slowness on its target. Ow! To avoid getting stuck, it's best to either take it down quickly or to just keep moving, which is especially easy if you're riding a crested gecko as these oversized lizards make for an excellent escape vehicle due to their special wall climbing abilities. Whatever you do, don't fall. <laughs> hey, I'm not that fat. <laughs> Easily tamed with grasshopper eggs, the hardest part of acquiring this insensitive steed is simply finding one due to them loving to hide inside forest caves alongside the useful ringtail. As it's often dubbed the miner's cat, you can find it underground or on the surface at night. And you'll want to make sure you find one too, because if you tempt it with glowberries, it'll follow you around and reward you with mining haste. Have a ringtail by your side and you'll be zooming through those caves in no what the? Where is that cute little guy go? Whoa! These must be kiwi birds! They're adorable little buddies that love to dance and eat kiwi cakes to multiply! Oh, cute! Though I think that one's going a little hard. Oh my! The majestic Argentavis! You'll never need an elytra again riding one of those. Though unlike some other mobs, these guys can't be tamed. And in order to get a big bird of your own, players must search the mountain forests to find and hatch their eggs. Dada. Close enough. Then with a steady diet of Quetzal meat, they'll be all grown up and ready to fly. Saddle up and mount your bird to take off flying at breathtaking speeds. And while flying around, keep your eyes peeled for the even rarer Quetzalcoatlus. Hatching these guys is identical to the Argentavis, but while it can fly you on its back, the Quetzalcoatlus can fly you and up to three others at once using a specially added stand. And although it might not be as fast as the Argentavis, if you equip a flying helmet crafted from leather and glass, you'll get a speed boost to more quickly transport your whole crew around. Also in these strange lands, you can come across the odd Amigo Mob. This clever little buddy loves to sprinkle glitter on nearby creatures, granting them near indestructibility unless the Amigo is taken out. But if you did that, then you'd have to worry about the reinforcements, as it can then spawn in the cute but still deadly Amigo Elites. So instead, I'd recommend trading these guys some cakes for valuable items. If you treat them with respect, they'll do the same to you. While below the dark forest treetops float the lanterns. These mobs glow naturally like magical jellyfish in the trees, and keen-eyed adventurers will take notice of the luminous jelly they drop upon death. This substance, when snacked on, will light your eyes up with night vision, which can both give you an edge over common mobs and help you spot the powerful
Apple Raffle. This behemoth of a plant stalks like a creeper, but packs an even meaner punch. It'll actively hunt you down, launching vegetable explosives that detonate on impact. Get too close, and you might even find yourself poisoned. Though, despite its destructive nature, defeating a raffle will reward you with explosives of your very own. Ha 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 ha! Who's the hunter now? Just be careful not to explode any of these tiny glow bugs. Dark forests twinkle with the light of these little crawling critters, and if you explode them, you won't be able to collect their bioluminescent drops, which can be crafted into a new green lantern block, allowing you to more easily light up the dark new dead forest biome. Home of this menacing elongated creeper variant called the Deeper. When these creatures explode, they unleash a massive gas ball that inflicts poison and blinding madness on those caught within. But even still, as the gas clears, their offspring emerge, destined to grow into new threats if you're unable to catch them all. Hey, get back here! <sighs> what? Who's there? Oh no! Aggressive by nature, these spirits lie in wait to surprise unsuspecting wanderers. Though, nothing a little fire can't fix. Unlike other mobs, when one of these tree spirits is slain, they'll bone meal the ground where they died, along with dropping wood, apples, and precious forest energy. An item which, when held, will grow plants around you as you walk. Ooh, instant green thumb. Or, uh, toes. Though tree ants are both much more challenging and rewarding. This monstrous tree reveals itself when a player has chopped down one too many oaks. And tough as it is, the battle is worth the challenge for the tree ant's magic root. This special item, when held in your offhand, grants your attacks a 20% chance to slow enemies down, giving you an edge in combat. As long as you're not fighting a Temnopo. Because while they may look intimidating and occasionally act aggressively, these creatures have a softer side. And them preferring a diet of raw fish over a fight means that you can easily tame them and turn this beast into a loyal, rideable companion. It'll be your boat through murky waters, which you'll definitely want to have on hand if you encounter any of these little guys. The caplings, while looking cute and peaceful, will spring to life if you get too close, prancing your way, only to go out with a bang! Basically, a creeper, but harder to see. <laughs> Not a problem when you've got this handy night vision helmet, though, courtesy of the praying mantis. These swift insects hit hard, leaving you bleeding, immobilized, and struggling to see for precious seconds. Brave the battle, though, and you'll be rewarded with emeralds and their eyes, which can be used to craft that night vision helmet. Just make sure you're holding a redstone block to keep it activated as you watch your step around coastal cliffs, for the winged nagas can attack at any moment. These swift drakes zip through the air, spitting acid venom that can melt your health. Thankfully, with a well-timed arrow, you can send it crashing down. And though their acid is fierce, it's also helpful if you manage to kill one and grab a poison fang. Then, you can brew antidotes and preventatives against theirs and other poisons. It just won't work on acid slimes. Their rolling razors at high speeds can leave you poisoned and hurting, though they're even more dangerous when they're dead, as then they'll burst, spilling rotten acid that snares you with hunger and harm. Though being essentially zombified slimes means that you can cure them into regular slimes with a potion of weakness and a golden apple, if you're short on slime balls. Oh no! They found me! Those up there are called the Zazar and are an airborne menace that can unleash a laser fury. More alarming though is its ability to spawn baby Zazars for backup. Dow! Though most players hunt them for their drops as they're great sources of iron, redstone, and their rare nucleus item, used for crafting unique items like the sclerite chest and sparkle golems, or for lighting up areas like a beacon. Might even lure in a Wyman or two. Now, these little critters use diamonds as camouflage, and even though peaceful, can still deliver a surprising cut if you get too close. Make sure you have a silk touch pick handy, because without one, you might just find that your diamond has grown legs and run off. <laughs> Hey, come back! I just want to smelt you! Oh, whoa, <laughs> excuse me. I'll just, uh... Oh! Ah! The Salta is a slime variant that makes you bounce, often high enough to take significant fall damage. Let me down!
down! Eh! So I can fight the ghostly Palper, an ice spirit of majestic proportions. With its swift moves and high jumps, getting hit means you're slow, making your escape tricky, especially when it summons ice walls to trap you. And try your best to take it down quickly, because if lightning strikes, the Palper will multiply! Whoa! Doubling your trouble. Defeat this frosty foe and you'll gain a wall generator, which is perfect for quick shelter construction. Aha! <laughs> Feels like home. What in the? Oh. This bloody snail is the Hypnocol. Residing in dead forests, it has the power to hypnotize you with dizziness. And the only way to stop it is to kill... Uh, uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> right. Oh, I love this snail. <laughs> huh? Oh, right. And the snail says to make sure and check out this video for more crazy Minecraft things. Haha, <laughs> I'm gonna die.